Welcome to the Bible Balance HealthCast, episode number 399. Certain estrogen products can increase your risk of clotting. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Blood clots are scary. If you have a blood clot, you can die. It can break loose. It can get stuck in your heart. It can get stuck in your brain. And it can kill you and your lungs. And you want to do everything you can to avoid them. What we want to talk about this week are various risk factors that might cause you to be at risk for developing blood clots. And then we want to talk about strategies for avoiding those risk factors. Mm -hmm. So the first and most obvious risk factor is genetics. Mm -hmm. So so talk to me about the genetic risk factor. So there are are, um, multiple genetic risk factors that we found... Um, and can be te- these risk factors can be tested for. They um, seven. They're actually, genetic it's markers. eleven. We've 11? increased our number. We okay. started out with seven tests, uh-huh. genetic tests, and they found some more that were related to people who getting better get and better blood clots. That's right. Yeah. To get blood clots, so um, these tests can be ordered. You can find out if you're genetically at risk for blood clots or not. Mm-hmm. That usually isn't done for people who haven't had a blood clot. So let's walk through the the theory here. If you've had a blood clot and you've been treated for one, the question is, why did you get it? Now, And will you get it again? And will you get it again? So we're going to go over all the different risk factors that could have caused you to have a blood clot. But the doctor wants to know if you're at higher risk than the average person. Right. So if you if you do all of these these uh, processes or uh, take care of yourself so that you won't get them. Will that make you free and clear to not get any more blood clots? Or do you have this genetic problem that means you could get a blood clot at any time, any place, if you increase your risk just a little bit by doing this or that? Unlike most people, you would get a blood clot, they wouldn't. So that's when we run the blood tests to see if you have that risk. Sometimes I run the blood test. That's not usually my role is to run it after a blood clot, but I run the blood clot in patients who come to me and say, I had a blood clot and I was on oral estrogen. Now, I want to know, mm, was it the oral estrogen or was it really the fact that she has a genetic reason to have blood clots? Is she at higher risk? So, like, is she obese? Right. So, the risks are, that the risks include being obese because that... The weight of your uh, of your fat actually slows your ve- venous return, so the blood can get past so, so, the so fat to your legs. Yeah, the legs and the get plenty of blood flow, back. and the yeah. veins bring it back. But then the veins are slowed down by the by fat. <laughs> it's an Believe it or not, it. when you look inside yeah. someone's abdomen who is obese, they have fat all on the inside of their pelvis and their abdomen. I mean, it's not just outside, right. and it's not just that fat pad over your intestines. Their whole pelvis is filled with it, which actually blocks the blood flow up from your legs. Pinches it off. And it, yeah, it's like it's like it has to push against pressure to get past that, and okay. veins don't do that very well. So they back up the blood, and the blood slows down. So a blood clot happens when the your blood slows down, or it spins, it hits, it hits some kind of a of a rough area in your vein and and it start or an inflamed area like if you were bruised or you walked into something and there's inflammation in the vein where you hit the side of the uh, side of the bed or something mm-hmm. and and that can actually cause the blood clot too but the pressure and the slowing of the flow of your of your veins and venous return that's big and obesity is one of the reasons why you can get blood clots so even if your ge- genes are fine, you're right. Ge- if you're genetically fine, and obesity, could, obesity still be a could still be that problem. All right, and then uh, lack of movement. Yeah, your veins work by you moving around. 
So you've all seen little old people in the nursing home are sitting in a wheelchair or yes. are sitting and sitting and and not doing anything. Their legs are just still, and they're they have cankles. They basically have no ankles, really swollen uh, lower extremities. That's because they're either their heart isn't pumping very well enough to p- get the whole system going, or yeah. more likely they're doing nothing with their bodies. So. All the fluid. So it's just, a fluid buildup in their lower it, legs it's and gravity. feet. You see it all swollen up. It's gravity, and their veins work. Your veins work by your muscles moving. So your muscles actually squeeze your veins and squeeze the blood out of your veins up to your heart again. So if you're not moving around and you're not moving your lower extremities, then the, everything pools in your lower extremities. It's called stasis. The blood just sits there and forms a clot. So, so one of the most important things that you can learn to do and require of yourself is to walk every day right. as many steps as you can walk. And and I see a number of older people with with walkers or canes who mm-hmm. don't have good balance and who literally don't move. Right. And they sit on the couch or they sit in an easy chair or they stay in bed. And these are the ones that are at risk then Forgetting. of that stasis and the swelling in the lower extremities. Right. And blood clots. Especially if they're not putting their feet up, especially if their feet are dependent. Yes. The um, the one thing you can do if you're not very mobile is you can you can be in a rocking chair and you can rock and that actually helps because mm-hmm. you're moving your, your lower extremities and the rest of your body. So that helps bring the blood flow uh, back to your heart. So another one that you mentioned is low oxygen environment, like an airplane? Like an airplane. And that's or the only one. a pressurized one. cabin? or uh, Yeah, the pressurized cabin is pressurized, but it still has a lower oxygen tension than... Here on ground zero, basically, okay. mm-hmm. when you're, you're when you're at sea level, you have the best oxygen tension. Mm-hmm. You have the most oxygen uh, that is that is available for you to breathe. But when you get hypoxic right. for any reason, and this could be if you had COPD, meaning you'd smoked a lot, or, or people get COPD who haven't smoked, and they're they're not bringing enough oxygen into their their bodies. But most of us have the lowest oxygen tension when we're in an airplane. So would this be more likely then to get the blood clot in the lungs because of the oxygen? No, the lung, the lung blood clots come from your lo- lower from the extremities. Legs, they break loose. Okay. And they break loose. All right. And then they flow up and they lodge in your in your uh, lungs. Okay. So, and that's very, that's even more dangerous than having a blood clot in just your lower extremity. So, so far the things that we're talking about have to do with uh, restrictions on the veins, the right. pressure. Pressure on the veins, right? What about thick blood? So, what is it? Thick. You can have th- you can have thick blood from either really high lipids that that'll thicken your blood, make it harder to push the blood through your arteries and your veins, and that slows it down. Or you can have high red count blood red blood cell counts and high platelet counts, and that thickens your blood as well, and that makes it harder for your blood to be pushed by your heart, which gives your heart a problem. But in this case, we're talking about blood clots. It makes it harder for it to be pushed back up to the heart. So it slows it down. And again, we get stasis and then we can get blood clots. Okay. Um, the ar- arteriosclerosis, right. uh, atherosclerosis, if you want to call it that same thing, is is um, basically you get these... these um, buildups of plaque on the artery, and that can actually give you um, inflammation, and the inflammation can then uh, cause the cause the blood to uh, it put out some clotting factors. And also the blood kind of spins as it goes past these, these little, um, it's, like a, it's like a speed bump. So it kind of goes past that and spins instead of just going straight through the blood vessels, which then tends to increase the risk of clotting. So, so it's like, that's it's in the like arteries. A, uh, centrifuge that that spins off. It's more like a whirlpool. You would see a whirlpool in, you know, yeah. in water that hits a rock and then it pool and then uh-huh. it spins. So that that is one of the risks for getting an ar- arterial clot and that can go up to your brain. Right. And those are the ones that cause strokes. They that it can okay. also go to your and, <clears throat> to your heart. And then the last one you have is oral estrogen. Oral estrogen. So we started out talking about estrogens. Mm-hmm. And oral estrogen, like oral birth control pills, oral um, uh, 
ERT, estrogen replacement therapy, or HRT, hormone replacement therapy, those are both considered, um, unless, unless it's said that it's something else, oral estrogen, uh, with com combined with either progesterone or not, but it's the estrogen portion of oral estrogen that can cause blood clots. And we have to be very careful in people with the genetic clotting problems, people who have had uh, a blood clot in the past mm -hmm. or who we've proven has a genetic problem. We have or to, these risk factors like or, obesity, or lack factors. of movement. Right. So we would not want to give oral estrogen to these patients mm -hmm. or oral birth control pills. So that's estrogen. Mm -hmm. So in someone who has these risk factors, usually estrogen in birth control pills is given to younger people. So they don't have that. so many of these issues, yet they still can have the genetic issues. Right. So, and there are 11 specific genetic tests that help identify those markers. Yes, yes. And, and, and they're all convoluted names, so we're yeah, not going to recite yeah, them all. Yeah, but we'll have them, we have them in our blog so that yeah, you can look them you up. You can look but, at them, yeah. But in any case, birth control pills can increase your risk for clotting, although it's much rarer uh -huh. than estrogen replacement therapy with oral estrogen. So the, the option is... If you have this risk or you have it in your family or you have any of these other uh, risk factors, then you should try a non-estrogen birth control or an estrogen that's, that is not oral. Like you can use the, uh, there's a ring that's an estrogen replacement or excuse me, a, a birth control replacement, the NuvaRing. It has estrogen in it, but not oral estrogen. And so it does not increase the, um, the clotting factors in the liver. So that's uh, also something you can do an IUD, which I like, because that has no estrogen in it. And uh, that would be my pick, it would be a Mirena IUD. It has a little progesterone in it, but no estrogen. So that, that would be a, a good answer for people who are trying to not get pregnant. But for people who are trying to get their estrogen replacement therapy, a patch, or what I do, a pellet, where we put it under the skin and it lasts for four months, or... Um, Sometimes there's there's an estr a string, which is like a ring that you can put in the vagina that slowly uh, gives Releases off estrogen. estrogen. Yeah. But those are not high risk for blood clots. It doesn't cause blood clots to have a non-oral estrogen. So if, if you are a person who's at high risk, if you have a history of having had blood clots or you are in these categories of risk that we've identified, mm -hmm. there are some strategies that you would recommend that they consider that mm -hmm. reduce their level of risk. And, yes. and the first one is to wear compression stockings. Now, what are compression stockings? Well, we used to call them support hose. Okay. You can just wear su support hose that keep... And they keep, make those for men as and well. And they make them for men, but they call them com compression socks. They usually come up to here on men. Okay. You, and they you can get them for women that, are up, that come up to your knee. I prefer the whole leg being compressed and getting the blood all the way into the pelvis and back up to the bigger uh, veins. So pilots actually wear suits. That help them do. I mean, yeah. uh, jet pilots, mm -hmm. uh, jet military pilots. Military. Yeah, they, uh, because when they when they do a high gravity dive mm -hmm. and come up, the blood all has drained out of their yeah, head. Yeah, and they need to and get so it back these, there. So these suits inflate and put mm -hmm. pressure on the lower extremities to force that blood back up. I mean, so we use a compression it in hose is uh, similar. Yeah, the compression hose doesn't. It doesn't have the. Um, it doesn't. It's it always do it there. Externally. It's always it's, there. It yeah. doesn't like when you when you stand up, it doesn't start working. And I mean, it works all the time. All the time. Okay. So it it doesn't have like a machine attached to it that is going to help, to help yes. you. It's not that complex. Right. It just is keeping your your uh, veins and your uh, in your lower extremities compressed so that they will push the blood back up. It's it's a simple concept. Sure. But it works very well for preventing both varicose veins, which is just... Is so a, another recommendation clots. that you make is if you're going to be flying for a long mm -hmm. time and you know that that's going to happen, mm -hmm. one thing is to wear the compression hose, but the other is drink a lot of water and stay hydrated. Right. So dehydration thickens your blood. So if you're dehydrated when you get on a plane and you're going to be going to Australia or something like that, you need to be drinking water, not Diet Coke, not coffee, and nothing else that dehydrates you and certainly not alcohol. Those cause you to be more dehydrated than even the, the air and the low oxygen tension. So you need to keep your tank full to keep your blood flowing well and keep, keep it from getting thick. And then you recommend 
81 milligrams of aspirin for three days before a flight. Yeah. And and then certainly aspirin on the day of the flight. So and, and that's a blood thinner. Yeah, blood eighty one milligrams of um, is that aspirin. like one aspirin tablet or? Well, it's it's actually what we used to call baby aspirin. Oh, okay. But now we have adult coated eighty one milligrams, so it doesn't hurt your stomach. Aspirin. Yeah. So we we recommend that you take that every day for three days before your flight, and then the day of the flight and the day after. So that's just it. A cheap, easy way to thin your blood and decrease the clotting. I used to have a professor years ago that took aspirin all the time, and he started having bleeding. Yeah, he had an ulcer, and <laughs> because it ruptured the capillaries in his stomach, mm-hmm. and, and so then now they've made coated aspirin mm-hmm. to reduce that. Right, but I still don't think you should be just snarfing just take, down snarfing aspirin, aspirin all aspirin. day long. Yeah. I mean, that's probably. But if you know you're going to fly, or especially yeah. on a long flight, you just need one. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, some of the people that have high blood counts and high high platelet counts, you need to keep your your blood count down. If it's if we're talking about too many red cells, you need to have your hematocrit less than fifty. That's fifty percent red cells out of all the volume of your blood. And then if you have have too many platelets, you just need to be under a doctor's care to be getting rid of the platelets that and that's are called building a up. Phlebotomy. phlebotomy. Usually for the platelets, they give you back your red red cells because usually those patients don't have too many, too many red, red cells. cells. Yeah. But but for um, people who have too many red cells, we mm-hmm. just take their blood. And, <laughs> and throw every it away. Once in and a while, put it on and, your roses because it's really yeah, good yeah. for <laughs> Throw it away. <laughs> throw it away. And we throw it away in a red box. Yeah. We don't just throw it away because well, it is Well, medical officers have to yeah. do it. Yeah, they have to be safe. That's yeah. right. So, uh, and that's what we do. Yeah. So the other thing is staying active. If you're going to be on a plane, you need to get up and move <laughs> around every hour. If you're going to sleep, you can sleep for a couple hours, then you need to get up and move around besides having these stockings on. Or if you're driving a long road trip, you need to stop Mm -hmm. every couple of hours and get out and walk around. And if you have the genetics for blood clots, many people have to take Lovenox, which is like a heparin, when you fly because it's such a high risk that that the aspirin's not enough. So their doctor will prescribe that if they have that uh, high clotting genetics. Okay, and then you say stay away from oral estrogens, yeah. which we've already talked about, mm-hmm. and avoid but, becoming obese, if, which is always it, a good rule. Yeah, obesity is, is a major killer in American society. Yeah, it is. You have to find ways to fight obesity all the ways that you can. And then an interesting one to me, because I go skiing once or twice a year, mm-hmm. if you're not used to being at high altitudes and you're going to be at high mm-hmm. altitudes, uh, then you have to make sure that you have time to adjust right? because so, you're at risk. So you should go... So if you're, gonna, if you're going to the Colorado Rockies, then stay in Denver for a couple of days. I mean, it doesn't completely you can, adjust yeah. you. But if you if you have these issues, you need to slowly adjust to the altitude. If you live there all the time, you've already adjusted. Right. So, so this is not so going to be an issue So the concern is you. if you have these risk factors mm-hmm. and you are at risk for blood clotting, mm-hmm. then you need to be aware that this is one of the ways you can reduce the risk. So if you right. just jump on a plane and fly to Colorado to go skiing. And zip up to the mountains. Yeah, you increase your risk level. That's right. So so slow is slow is good in yeah. that case. But but we were we were re-quoted in the everyday health section mm-hmm. uh, in a, in the article called called estrogen products can spike your blood clot risk. So we wanted to come out and say there yeah. were other things besides estrogen. And it makes it sound like all estrogen, and it's not all estrogen. It's just oral estrogen that can spike your blood clot risk. So we wanted you to be well aware of the other things that you can do to prevent getting a a deadly blood clot or just a blood clot that keeps you in bed on medication or puts you on heparin. Well, and and when Dr. Moffat says we were re-quoted, what she's referring to is that the book that we wrote, The Secret Female Hormone, was quoted by the authors of this article. It's a great read, and we recommend it to you. If you haven't gotten it, it's available on Amazon. Secret Female Hormone. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. 
Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.